What's good, family? It's me, Coach 67 Sports TV. Shout out to the General 7A Sports TV and the entire LDBC, Lions and Broadcasting Community. Shout out to Anthony O'Neill and the Impact Creative Society. Shout out to the Louisiana All-American Sports Network. And shout out to the greatest universe in the world, the Southern University, home of the mighty Jaguars. The blue light has evaporated, but I'm back at you with another video. This is my post-game reaction to Southern University's 42-10 victory over Savannah State. And before I actually get into the video, I like to set the mood and the atmosphere for the game. Uh, of course, for Southern University fans, it was another whiteout game. Uh, just like last week at Cowboy Stadium in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, they went all Southern University fans to wear white. Uh, for this game, it was a whiteout also. So that's why I have on a white Southern University t-shirt. And, you know, if you look at all the toxic negativity on social media when it comes to the Red Pill community, when it comes to the gender war between men and women, black men and women in particular, uh, you know, it's, you know, at points it's kind of aggravating and nauseating. However, you know, coming to A.W. Mumford Stadium, Pete Richardson Field, it's a real, real family-friendly environment. You know, you see couples that's been married longer than I've been living, you know, entire families, you know, husband and wife, elderly couples with their kids, you know, young couples with their kids. You know, it was just a lot of family members of families, you know, whether they're elderly couples, uh, you know, whether they're couples with kids, whatever the case may be, it's just a real family friendly atmosphere. And if you want to get away, you know, get into the real world and get away from the, you know, the toxic, negative, like red pill community in terms of, you know, women or this and women or that. I mean, you see a lot of beautiful women, a lot of feminine women. Um, and like I said, you just see a lot of families and couples, and it's just a beautiful atmosphere every time I go to A.W. Mumford Stadium, people just some feel. And, of course, you know, it wasn't a ridiculous amount of Savannah State fans, but Savannah State was represented, where, represented very well for this particular game. So, you know, they had more fans from Savannah State than I thought. Uh... Of course, Savannah State got the ball first. And one thing I can say about Southern University's defense, they were rock solid last week against McNeese. Rock solid again this week. And they came out and, uh, you know, Savannah State went three and out. They struggled. Southern's offense got the ball. And, oh, my goodness. They struggled ridiculously. It was ridiculous struggle early in the game and I'm not gonna lie you know I don't mean any disrespect to this young man but truthfully speaking Noah Biden he makes Marcus Jacoby look like Eric Randall he makes Harold Blood look like Quincy Richard uh, I mean he I hate to say it but in terms of quarterback play he was terrible you know uh, and one particular play Kendrick Grimes was wide open in the flats. He overthrew him. I mean, he just couldn't make simple passes. Southern had to try to leave, lean heavily on a run game. And Savannah State, you know, defensively, they knew Southern couldn't pass the ball. So uh, uh, Savannah State's defensive linemen, they weren't even playing the pass or so. They were just strictly playing a run. And that's why Southern struggled, you know, uh, so Savannah State, you know, they went three and out. First play, Kendrick Grimes got like a 14-yard run, and then they abandoned the run. They threw the ball three straight times with Noah Biden, and he was terrible. Uh, so they went four and out, punt the ball. Uh, you know, Savannah State, you know, three, it was back and forth. And the crazy thing about it, even though neither team really moving the ball, Savannah State is gaining field position. That's how poorly Southern offense is struggling. And then eventually, you know, they kind of got it together a little bit. Uh, he decided he wanted to use his legs. 
which he said he did multiple times last week against McNeese. Last week against McNeese State, I counted at least five times where Noah should have took off and run, and he would have got a first down, but he didn't. So he ran. I mean, he pretty much moved the ball with his running and a running game. Uh, and, you know, Southern had to settle for a field goal because the drive stalled in the red zone. Then Savannah State got the ball back. And the one long, like, bad play Southern defense had, at one point uh, Savannah State ran a read option and the quarterback pulled it. And all the Southern defensive players converged on the running back and they tackled him in the backfield. But the problem was the quarterback pulled it. And everybody got outside of their lanes. The ends didn't keep contained. And he went for a long 81-yard touchdown run. And Savannah State is up 7-3. to three. Uh, You know, it was the unthinkable. So, you know, they gave Noah a couple more series, and he struggled. <clears throat> and, of course, it was back and forth in terms of neither offense really moving the ball. And then Coach Graves and Mark Frederick, they finally had enough. They gave Noah the hook. I ain't gonna lie, they were more patient with him than I would have been from a coaching perspective. They gave him the hook and they put Xavier and Z uh, to set in the game. And the offense dramatically improved because now instead of the defensive lineman for Savannah State just strictly playing the run, uh, you know, Zay, you know, even though he had like maybe about seven passes. And he threw deep down the field and he, he overthrew, you know, multiple receivers. But it opened up the offense and it kept Savannah State's defense honest. And, you know, you know, it's obvious and apparent Southern has found his starting quarterback. Uh, you know, he's shown a great deal of progression from the spring game, because I'm not gonna lie. He I wasn't impressed with him in the spring game. And uh, even last week, you know, he got a couple passes knocked down at the line of scrimmage. So I felt like, you know, uh, but I'm not going to lie, he played, he played much better than Noah did tonight. And the sad thing about Noah is yeah, it's no real progression, you know, from the spring game to now. It's kind of like he's stuck in the same. Really, it's, it's the mirror image of Harold Blood because – from the spring to the start of last season, how blood showed no progression. And it's the same with Noah. And uh, I think the handwriting is, is on the wall that, you know, Noah really is not a real good quarterback. And Zay should be your starter. And Jalen Wood probably should be your backup. And I see why Gramlin no longer wanted Noah because, truthfully speaking, he just, he's not that guy. And that's it. And, you know, once Zay kind of took over the offense, you know, the offense started moving. And one thing I noticed, Southern was able to run the ball at certain portions of the game, but the offensive line, they better at pass blocking than they are run block blocking. And that's one thing I noticed. And, you know, later on in the game, of course, uh, you know, Southern, you know, they kicked three straight field goals. They were down seven seven to three, then they were up nine to seven. And then once they got in the game, you know, the offense just kind of took over. And, you know, they went on a run. And before you know it, they have 29 to 10. Uh, they went to kick a field goal. Savannah State blocked it just like last week. Uh, and, I mean, of course, Griffin, he hit a few field goals, but that one particular field goal was blocked. Savannah State returned it. Uh, to the red zone. They really didn't move the ball too much after that. They had to settle for a field goal. But, you know, after that point, that pretty much was it for Savannah State in terms of scoring. You know, Southern's offense, it drastically improved when Zay became a became quarterback. And it's obviously an apparent, apparent at this point. <clears throat> He's clearly the starting quarterback. And, you know, Southern ended up winning 42-10. to 10. So, you know, we'll see the real test is next week against Jackson State. Uh, you know, hopefully Southern's offensive line, uh, they could do much better in the run game. I mean, they did a decent job running the ball considering the opposition they played against. But I think at times, you know, Mark Frederick really 
was trying to lean heavily on the run at certain points, and Savannah State was shutting it down. But you know, once the passing game got going, it really was open. It was able to open up the running game, and you know, more than anything, you know, I think we found our starting quarterback, and you know, I mean, that's that's just the truth of the matter. Uh, so if you found any value in this post game reaction, please like the video, share the video, comment in the comment section, subscribe to the channel. Also, click the notification bell so you can be alerted anytime I'm posting any new videos. Also, follow me at Coach 67 Sports TV on all social media platforms on you here on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, on X, which is formerly known as Twitter, and just all social media platforms. Uh, also, check out my brother Jared Eleven Green. Tomorrow will be another installment of the Southern Baller Show. I'm one of your few co hosts for that particular show. So come check me and the fellas in the panel out on the Southern Baller Show. We're going to talk about HBCU football, NFL football, and just football in general. I also, go check out my brother Brent Fox. He's a show on his YouTube channel called It's Just Me Starring Brent Fox. So go check out you know his channel. And for all of my uh, Pittsburgh Steelers fan. He's a huge Pittsburgh Steelers fan. And he talks about the Steelers. And for my LDBC family members uh, that love boxing, he's a 20 by 20 series. So go check it out. And also go check out the Louisiana All American Sports Network. Uh, you know, I, you know, we've been partnering together, you know, been doing some work together. Uh, we're getting ready to drop uh, first couple episodes of Jaguar Prowl, you know some Southern University content we're working on. And also go check out my brother Cadillac Red, Supreme Pe Supreme Beast Boxing Talk. Uh, on his backup channel, Supreme Beast After Hours, the coach's playbook. So go check out all my LDBC brethren and check out the Louisiana all American Sports Network. Hope you found value in the video. I'll catch y'all on the rebound. Y'all have a blessing, phenomenal night, Jaguar Nation. Catch y'all on the rebound. Peace and blessings.